Hey everyone, today I will be making ube leche flan cake. I've always wondered how leche flan was made because it's a favorite childhood dessert of mine. And what better way to learn it by making it for the first time on top of ube cake. To start, I'll be making the caramel layer by melting sugar over medium heat. And once it's all melted, I'll immediately pour it into a cake tin. This recipe requires a lot of steps, but let's take it one step at a time. Let's break it down into three parts. Making the caramel layer, followed by leche flan, finished off with the ube cake. Since I had to switch camera angles in between takes, I waited a bit too long with pouring it, and it solidified on me before I could get a smooth shape. Not off to a good start, but I will give it another shot. On my second attempt, I immediately poured the caramel into the cake tin once it was all melted, and got a much better result. It was much easier to spread evenly this time, and it turned out much smoother. Now, it's time to make the flan. In a large bowl, I'll be mixing together all the ingredients by hand, and to ensure a silky texture, I'll be pouring the mixture through a sieve several times right into a measuring cup. Once the caramel layer has set, it's time to pour in the flan mixture right on top of it. It's so smooth. Oh my goodness. It's like a countertop. Oh, it's set. For the cake batter, I'll mix together egg whites and cream of tartar. Tartar? How do you pronounce this? I'm going to whisk until foamy, then gradually adding in the sugar and whipping until stiff peaks have formed. Stiff peak? Is that what stiff peak is? Once they're all mixed, I'll set that aside, and then in another bowl, I will take the egg yolks and mix it with more sugar until they lighten in color. Now it's time to add in oil, cold water, and very carefully adding in ube extract, making sure not to stain my fingers or anything else. And lastly, slowly pouring in all-purpose flour, baking powder, and a pinch of salt. looking great so far and it's time to fold in half of the whipped egg whites, giving that a whisk, and then finishing it off with the rest of the egg whites, mixing it until no streaks are visible. And I almost forgot to add in baking powder. Now it's time to slowly pour in the cake batter into the cake tin. I was worried about this step because I thought the flan and cake batter would mix together. But not to worry, they will separate from each other evenly while they bake. A water bath is needed to bake this, and since I don't have any trays with high walls, I will use my cast iron skillet, which should be good enough to hold enough water. I will simply place the cake tin on top and add boiling water until it reaches halfway up the sides. Into the oven it goes to bake at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for 55 to 60 minutes. It's ready when poking a toothpick into it comes out clean, just like any cake. It's time to remove the ube leche flan cake. It 
seems as if a lot of my caramel layer got stuck to the tin surface and ripped away from the top of the cake. Here's what I did wrong. I made a mistake by transferring the cake into the fridge without removing it from the tin first. So when I flipped it and removed it the next day, most of the caramel layer cooled down and stuck to the surface of the tin. On the bright side, it still tasted amazing and I'm very satisfied with how evenly the flan and cake are layered on top of one another. However, I wasn't completely satisfied with this and I decided to try again. On this attempt, I removed the cake from the tin and flipped it right after baking and right before placing it in the fridge. This yielded a better result and the leche flan looks much better. Now I am completely satisfied. Overall, both cakes from each attempt tasted amazing, but after learning how to properly make leche flan with Chef Levon, I figured I could give this another shot since I wanted to achieve that smooth top layer of that leche flan. I'm very happy with this result and this will be my go-to when I need to bring a dessert to an occasion. That is it for me in today's video, thank you so much for watching and remember, here at our virtual table, we make this a place to inspire and learn. If this video inspired you to make this, or if there's a certain way that you make this dish, let me know in the comments down below. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button and hit that bell to stay tuned for next week's video, where Chef Levon will be making hand-pulled noodles. See you all in the next one.